China's reopening, I mean, the world is uh, banking on China's reopening to drive growth, but you've yeah. been pretty um, unsure about the impact it would have on Australia's economy and growth. Why is that? Are you just underestimating or? No, I think it just, it's in two phases. I mean, when the Chinese were going through that enormous COVID wave, uh, my concern was for supply chains. Uh, Chinese supply chains and global su supply chains, which are heavily influenced by what's happening in China. Uh, when we get out of the worst of that COVID wave in China, we are relatively upbeat about the Chinese economic story over the next couple of years. We think it will recover a bit quicker than people anticipated last year and a bit stronger than people anticipated last year. We, that's obviously something that we, we need to see. Uh, in the Australian economy. You ask me why I'm still uh, optimistic. I'm optimistic about the future. Uh, we've got a lot of things going for us uh, in the Australian economy. We've got uh, good prices for our exports. We're seeing the beginnings of some decent wages growth after a decade of stagnation. Uh, we've got unemployment with a three in front of it. We're an incredibly attractive investment destination. All of those things are going for us, but we've got a lot coming at us as well from around the world. We need to be realistic about that too. Investment destination, of course, China wants greater collaboration when it comes to lithium. You say, wait a minute, international uh, investments into critical minerals need to be scrutinized further. Are you then not looking forward to uh, enhanced cooperation with China on lithium at least? Uh, I think the whole world is interested in our critical minerals uh, and in the opportunities, particularly in lithium, but also hydrogen. We get a lot of interest from right around the globe uh, when it comes to those opportunities and we're excited about them in Australia. We want to be a renewable energy superpower in Australia and so much of our policy agenda is about that cleaner, cheaper, more reliable, increasingly renewable energy. But how about energy. collaboration with China in particular? How are you assessing that? Well, we want to collaborate with partners right around the world. Uh, and like any country, we have to work out what the best version of that is for us and how we apply a, a sense of the national economic interest to all of these investments. Uh, but we've said multiple times uh, that when it comes to supply chains, uh, we want to shore up those supply chains, not shut them down. Uh, we want to be a reliable supplier to the world. Uh, we've got tremendous advantages in Australia. Uh, a very stable, very um, profitable uh, place for the world to invest. Increasingly, that will be about our energy advantages, whether they are traditional sources of economic strength or some of these new opportunities in hydrogen, lithium, batteries and the like. Uh, but we're excited about the future in that regard. And I think the world is too when they look at Australia. So what you're saying is despite warming relations between Australia and China, you're looking to diversify your trading partners regardless. Well, I don't see that as, a, as an especially controversial strategy. I think everybody's trying to work out post-COVID what is the best version of our supply chains to make them more resilient, to make them more reliable at the same time as we don't overlearn the lessons of COVID. You know, we don't want to shut down and look completely inwards. We do want to make our supply chains more resilient. We do want to add more value in Australia. We do want to work out the optimal mix uh, of domestic and foreign investment in some of these areas of immense economic opportunity. I think all of my colleagues and counterparts here at the G20 are engaged in a similar conversation when it comes to their own advantages, and that's what we're doing in Australia.